G'day everybody, it's Peps here and today we have the 2022 West Coast Eagles season preview. Now, we've done already a number of these previews throughout uh, 2022 already, but there was only one person that we could tap on the shoulder again when it came to the West Coast Eagles. We know him as was a King from the Eagle Nation podcast. Wazza, welcome to Lay Sound. Thank you very much, Chris. It's an uh, honour to be on your show again, mate. Looking forward to chatting some good footy, mate. Well, we're going to be talking about good footy. We're talking about West Coast Eagles footy. And there's just one question I have to ask for you, sir, and it's simply this. Is 2022 the season where the West Coast Eagles swoop back into September action? Or will unfortunately be another season where their wings will be clipped? Well, depends on what angle I want to take. If, I, if you asked me this two nights ago, I would have said, yes, I think we're storming back up there. But after the last night, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to even have a fit team come round one. So, look, uh, the jury's going to be out. You know, West Coast Eagle fans will be hoping to give it one last hurrah, as they say. But you need to have fit and good experienced footballers on there to do that. And at the moment, I just can't see that happening. So I'm looking at middle of the road, to be honest. Okay, now before we get into it, because people are thinking last night, they'll be checking their watches, looking at the calendars and saying, I don't think anything happened last night. We're recording this on a Saturday. Uh, for those who in the, the Western world, that would be a Friday evening. What happened to West Coast um, when they met the Dockers? It just a just a scratch match just to sort of get the, the lactic acid and get the cobwebs out of the system. You just said lactic acid. I think they had it in their warm up. So um, when <laughs> <laughs> when they took the ground, it was like um, I thought the first five minutes was pretty entertaining, and after that, it was just one way traffic. Um, like I said it's a scratch match. Do you take anything out of it? You do, but then you don't. Um, let, I'm going to say one thing to the Frio fans out there: that was your biggest win over the West Coast, so you can gloat about it. But just remember where it was. And and then the Eagles' response will be to that. Go back to 2018 where you pumped us by 70-odd in a practice match again and we'll see the same results. But, hey, look, credit to Fremantle last night. They, they, they showed their brand of football and Simo's been spruiking it to the Eagles fans that they've got a new game plan. There's a bit of tinkering here and that. And if you watched the game last night, you didn't see anything but the same old, same old long kicking, slow movement, boring football, and they get the chance to do it next week against Freo Dockers again, and if it has the same outcome, it's going to be a long, long season for the West Coast Eagles. Well, I can tell you now one thing. You've got the second oldest list, and you've got the second most games experience. Well, that... That is a double-edged sword right That there. is. That and is. Now, the guy on the double-edged sword on the experience, how many of those are fit but? That's a problem with the Eagles. Um, at the moment, they must have walked under a ladder or broken a mirror because they had another three players go down last night, Elliot Yo, Dom Sheed. They're the two experienced guys. So they're another two on stint on the sidelines. Um, yeah, the list is getting longer. So, But test the depth for the Eagles, I guess. Well, you finished ninth last year, finished with 10 and 12. You, there was a cumulative of yourself, St Kilda and Fremantle on that. Your percentage was 93.19, so you're looking at the second best percentage outside of the final eight. But to get into that final eight, you were almost two games out, two and a bit games anyway. So even if you were to make it, it wouldn't have been – it would have it would have been, you know, shooting yeah. fish in the barrel, let's be yeah. honest about it. Yeah. Um, it, it. Look, we must admit one thing. You do have, according to champion data, the number one player in the league, in <laughs> Nick Natanui. Now, I apologise for everybody who has just spat out their water or their morning coffee or they've just uh, spilt bacon and eggs over themselves because I'm in a little bit of an agreement with, with you all. Like, I don't know how they've picked Nick Knack to be number one. Because champion, champion data is it's not very – it takes numbers and that's all, it, that's all it is. It's all about numbers and time and ground and stuff like that. You, yeah, I've never really taken much notice of champion data stats ever, even though they say Nick Nat is number one. Because um, we all know he's not the number one player in the competition because, for one, he only plays 70% of game time. So how can you be the number one player in the competition if you're only playing 70% of game time? Um, 
you just got to look at your big man, Maxi Gorn, plays nearly every minute of the game. So I think that's a kick in the teeth to players like that, but I don't think players take much notice of it either. So, Oh, no, no, no. There would be a few players out there that would be straight on Instagram taking a photo of the Herald Sun over here or the West Australian over there with their little picture saying elite. There would be one. I don't think Nick Nat would. I think he's got plenty of other things on his plate, but let's be honest. There would be 17 other clubs in the league, maybe, maybe not mine at the moment, that would take him anyway. So what, what, what he does on the field is elite. Let, let, let's not, uh, you know, I'm not saying it because he's Is it player. really though? Like, is it really? Well, that, well he is. is really? Well, you look at the game time beyond and I don't know if you've got the stats up there for goal assists or um, goals direct from ruck caps and stuff like that. I think he'd be number one in the league for that. Um, well, I know he's funny not enough, I actually have his stats up here, his 2021 stats, and they include I, things like, how tall is he again? He's, what, six foot? 202 centimetres, I think. 202, okay. Average is 1.6 marks a game. Yeah, it's not very good. His uh, marks yeah, ain't good. Not very good, nah. No. He's, he's, he's elite around goal. He averages 0. 0.01 of a goal. Uh, <laughs> he averages half a goal assist a game. Uh, but he does average three tackles. So he does do something. 31 hit outs. And this is, I think, where it starts to get a little bit better is, is that. In the guts. Is, in the guts, he is. His guts and his follow-up work is, is, is elite. second to none. And you yeah. have to worry about him when he goes down forward anyway. Yeah. So I, I can see it from that perspective. But doesn't play enough. No, doesn't play. Why, don't, why doesn't he play enough? I reckon it's because on the back of uh, two knee reconstructions and the workload they were putting him on, he. If you've seen Nick Nat up close, he is a massive unit, man. Yep. He's a big unit. Um, you know, he, he doesn't fly for marks as much as what he used to, so I don't know if that's because of his knees or not. Um, but, yeah, I think it's just a workload. But for Eagles to go forward, they'll either need a second-quality Ruckman there to help him out or he's just got to play more game time. Um, I did notice yesterday in the scratch match that he did play a lot more game time than a forty would have. Um, so some that's some of the Eagles, I don't know, unless you're strength and endurance coaches and all that, they've got to work that out that he was I think it was sixty five percent of game time last year. He's got to be up near the eight in the mid eighties at least. Yeah. Well he was your best and fairest last year. He wasn't all Australian last year. So he's obviously gonna be doing something right. But you know, when you say he's had two new reconstructions, the big fella down at the D's, Maxie Gorn's had two new recos as well too. So I know they're two different bodies. So you've got to look at – so it could be strength and conditioning. Oh, and I Max, don't know. And Maxie yeah. did have his at the start. That's probably the big difference as well yeah. too. Oh, yeah. 15 all there was. That 15 all, well played. <laughs> all right, now I'm concerned. We've heard about Jack Darling and everything that's been going on with him, not taking the COVID shots, et cetera. If he doesn't play this year, deep down, how big of a hole is it going to be for your mob? Well, it's a massive hole because he was our leading goal kicker last year with 41 goals. So you got to find somebody to replace that. Um, who's going to step up and do that? You got there's a myriad of uh, we got lots of tall forwards on our list, but um, yeah, it's a massive hole. Um, and Jack, he's another enigma sort of thing. He can be quiet for half a game, then he'll kick five and a quarter. Um, he's very talented. Um, it's very big divide over in here if he should be giving a go or if he's doing the right thing. But that's, you know, that's COVID, that's out of football. Um, but it's, to answer your question, it's a massive hole and um, it doesn't look like he's going to get filled anytime soon. And uh, then it's just uh, who will fill the hole if um, he doesn't adhere to uh, what the AFL and the Eagles want him to do. Has he stated the reason for not taking it? No, he's been quiet as um, since the release that, since when the deadline come that you had to have your first COVID injection, there was rumours around Perth um, that he was one and due to his wife's um, mum being a big anti-mandate person and doing a few protests in Kalgoorlie. Okay. So it, it was rumoured that he wasn't going to be on board with it. But when, you know, when the push come to shove, there was a few others that were in the same situation, but they went and got the uh, shot and that day come, uh, he didn't take, he didn't have it. Uh, Eagles released their press conference saying blah, 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 and he said someone that he's away because of an injury. Hmm. Didn't say anything about the COVID jab or anything, and since then we haven't heard squat from him, and if you believe everything the club says or the media says, nor have they. 
So, um, yeah, it's not looking good. Um, there's that. been photos of him. Man, he's a massive unit and he looks fit. That's the thing. And it's just it's frustrating. And once again, I'm, I'm only going by my – look, I felt tired for a couple of days and that's it. Not too sure what the whole thing about it is, and, and I, I still don't understand it. Maybe I, I can read it as much as I possibly can, but when this is effects, you know, if, if they said, look, you, you have to take the jab to, to work, I'd be like, yeah, okay, fair enough. So, yeah, well, I look it's at also the protect, Yeah, it's just a tough one. I wouldn't want to be in issues, and I can only imagine how tough it would be I know, to make I know, that decision, yeah. I know this might sound wrong coming out to the people that are, are if they're listening to it and they're yeah, exactly they right. are anti-mandate, but... If I was getting eight hundred thousand dollars a year to get a needle in my arm, <laughs> I'd be there day one. Um, because it's a team sport, I'd be there day one. If it was an individual sport like tennis, I could understand, but yep, it's a team okay. sport. Um, and that might sound right, but at, at, if if I was uh, West Coast Eagles player and he was doing that to me, I'd be on the phone to him and going, "What the hell are you doing, mate? Um, you know, are you with us or are you or you're not?" And it seems like he's not with them, so. That can unsettle a club, um, and as you know, with your team there last year, everything fell into line. Everyone's going to be on the same page to win a flag, and at the moment, the Eagles aren't even on the same page. So, and because of Jack Darling, um, got to respect his decision, but I just don't understand it. Yeah, and I think, I think I'll have a will. <laughs> I'll respect it. You don't have to agree with it. Yep. We can move on. Hey, look, I did, you did mention my mob. Everybody knows I'm a Melbourne supporter. You were lucky enough to go to the grand final last year in. Earth. Thank you very much. A, oh, <laughs> pleasure, pleasure. Like I said, I had I had I had a ticket that I couldn't use, so obviously threw it your way, and it was great. Just for the for the listeners who weren't able to go to the grand final in Perth because you know, everybody else was locked out, and literally still are. What was that experience like in a nutshell for for you being a football supporter, being able to go and see an AFL grand final in your home state? Well, yeah. It's- Different views I took because, like, I've been to grand finals in Victoria at the MCG, and to me, the grand final is more about the it's just it's more than the game, it's a build up, you know, your, your AFL parade, and just all the build up in Melbourne where you got all the radio things on and players. You had none of that over here, <coughs> so, so that was a bit, bit of a letdown, yep, because there was no build up, and there was two weeks break if I can remember from the prelim final. Yep, there was. So there was a big, like, hole there that could have been filled, but it wasn't filled. But when we got to the ground and, like, you know, I've been to Optus nearly every game that's been on, even to trio games and stuff like that, and you get big crowds. But this was the first time it was ever sold out. And you walked in and just seeing people there and I don't know if they're all were Melbourne supporters, if they're all Bulldog supporters, I don't think half of them would have been. but. Just to go there and see a grand final that had two teams going in, it was, you know, the entertainment was different because it was at night. So the entertainment package was probably better than what you'd see at a day grand final. And seeing it being both, I could say the entertainment was way better. And once that ball bounced, it didn't matter if you're the MCG or Optus, you could have been anywhere in the world. It was such a good game. Yep. And, yeah, and hung in the balance there at halfway through the third term and, I was sitting next to some Bulldogs players and they happen to be uh, family members of Aaron Norton's. Yep. And they're sitting there and they're clenching the fist and I'm sitting there and I said to the guy I was next to, I said, oh, God, if the Demons don't kick the next one, we're in trouble. Yep. And then 44 minutes later, we're sitting there going, what the hell happened there? <laughs> it was um, pandemonium. Yeah, you weren't the only one. And yeah, it's been many, many times. I've mentioned it many times. And that's, a, that's a different conversation for another day. We can just listen to our grand final review from uh, late last year. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it was stunning. But I wanted to hear from you because you're, like I said, able to go. I'll throw a question out there and then we'll move back onto the Eagles. But it sort of fits in with that is the whole thing about uh, maybe every four or five years moving the grand final to a different state. Do you like that idea? Actually, I do, you know. Um, if you had a good, you know, you'd have to get, have a good ground. I don't yeah. think Brisbane, when they had it in Brisbane, from what I heard, was that was a good atmosphere sort of thing. It lacked something. Um, you know, Optus, I don't know if you've been over here to be to Optus Stadium. It's state of the art. It, it is something special. Um, and now they're doing the, the thing is that the MCG is going to get done up. Um, I'd love to see it go to different states every three or four years. 
I could definitely yeah, see Adelaide Oval. I could definitely yep. see uh, Sydney would be the challenge because you could hold up the SCG, but it's just not going to be big enough. No, you'd have to. And no one wants to go out to Stadium Australia, so that's I going mean, to be yeah. the challenge with that one there. And, and Brisbane, uh, I think there's plans to maybe knock down the Gabba and, and revamp yeah, that as well too. So I think that would be perfect for them to sort of, okay, we're going to give you the grand final in five years' time, Brisbane. It gives them that opportunity to get yeah. it right. But definitely – Perth looked awesome. Adelaide would look awesome. It'd be great to have it back at the G this year. People can go to the footy. It, well, they'd, it, it back to they'd, it they'd do it with a Super Bowl and it works, right? Yeah, it does so, work. So, and I know we've tried to replicate other sports every year, changing rules, blah, blah, blah. I just can't see why that can't be done. And maybe you have two years in Melbourne, then one away, then two years in Melbourne, another one. And I think it just gives that impetus. And I think you'd probably get more, I don't know, it would be, from outsiders out of Victoria, they wouldn't see it as the VFL anymore. You know what I mean? I do. I definitely agree with that. Unfortunately, there's a thing called a contract <laughs> that the government signed with the MCC, which holds everything else. But as we know, contracts can, can be, be broken, broken. <laughs> from either an AFL perspective or from a playing perspective as well too. All well, righty. Say, just on that, it'd yep. be a brave man, it'd be a brave premier in Victoria to break that contract. Uh, it'd be a very brave premier to break that contract. And it won't be the one that we have right now, trust me. He needs all the help he can get. And if he decided to, if he really wants to get himself out of Parliament, uh, get rid of the uh, grand final. <laughs> that, that, that would put the, you know, we're not happy with him anyway, but that'll put the, that'll lock it in. All right. You're in an interesting mob. I was just having a look at your list. You've got 12 players who have played over 100 games. And then everything sort of sits underneath that couple of 90s. But So you've almost got like a, a really younger list towards the bottom. So yeah, there's a big gap. There is a big but gap. There's, at the top end, we're talking you know, Shannon Herm with 301. We're looking at Josh Kennedy, 278. Jack Redden, 242. Jack Darling, well, he may not add to his 236. Uh, and Gaff, throw that in there as well too. That's the one that sort of caught up on me a little bit at 236 as well too. So you've got high numbers at the top, but a lot of lower at the bottom. Yeah. So are we going into that sort of gap year where we're, or are we going into the whole reset mode? We've had our 2018 success. Those players are getting to the end of their career. We're getting, they're getting into the twilight. We've got to just try and use them as much as we possibly can to bring the support of this younger crop through. Yeah, I think you're right on the money there. Um, and it's been said over here with that gap, you know, like they've got that experience there, so they're going to use it. But if it falls away really quickly, I think you'll see the uh, younger guys all pushed up. And if you're looking at round six and the Eagles are, two and four, and then they go up to round 10 and they're four and six. So I think you'll see a lot more youngsters getting a lot of a go. But uh, I'll go back to 2018 and Eagles sort of like, they blooded a lot of youth that year as well. They had eight debutants that year when they won, you know, won the grand final. So I, I, I don't look at it as a negative, but hopefully that's what they have to replicate this year. I'm not saying that's what the end result is going to be, but I just think they need to start giving some of these younger guys a bit of a go. And, you know, they didn't have – the game. The team they had in yesterday in the uh, scratch match was a bit of a concerning because it was a lot more of the experienced guys. And, you know, the younger guys were only getting like a quarter here and there. So it's going to be interesting to watch from an Eagles point of view. Uh, You got – they're very divided. You got people that think, oh, no, we're going to do it. We had enough experience. We're going to give it a go. And hey, they are all fit. You probably would, but um, I can't remember the last time I seen Shuey, Kent, uh, Kelly, Yo, and Nat Nui in, in the middle of the ground. And that's where the Eagles are going to fall away, unfortunately, because two thousand eighteen. Yeah, because there's three of those speed, guys are injured already. Speed kills. So, uh, and you've got, and and this is including the draft class from last year, but you've got. Not uh, 13 players, less than 10 games. Yep. So you're right. You need to large, you probably need at least five of those to get double digit games this year. To yeah, you need you need those you need those guy, games built into those guys. And there's there's a I don't know what the number is, I haven't got it in front of me, but the under 70, oh no, around about 30, 40, there's a number of them as well. They need to get more of those guys playing football, you know what I mean? Um there's Liam Duggan, he's only played, he's, I think he's played 99 games. But I wouldn't, 
off the top of my head, you wouldn't even think that he's played that 99 games because it's yeah. been over a long stretch. You know, you need kid, kids like that are, that are going to start playing regular football. Well, he's played no, – uh, no, I've got it. He's 116. Tom Barras is the one who's on 99. So you oh, were you were half right. right as well too. Who, by the way, love the way he handles himself, I must I must say. He is – he's spare. If Bruce was here, he'd say he's special. I just love oh. the way he handles himself. He, he speaks ask, very well too. Yep. I have to ask you uh, – uh, about this guy, big recruit a number of years ago, Tim Kelly. You threw you threw draft picks, the the drafting kitchen sink at this bloke. Yep, and you'd almost say, if you look at his form from what he was at Geelong to the form he's had over at West Coast, it hasn't panned out as well as you think it would. He did once again. He had pulled in a, an All Australian in two thousand nineteen. When did he come over to your mob? The year after. Year after. What what are the West Coast supporters saying about Tim Kelly coming over? Did we pay too much for him? Has that going to affect us? Oh look, um, or did no, you or did you buy for the time? Did you say, I reckon we could have got another flag, and he was one of those missing pieces. Well, that's what the that's what the ideal is. They they bought for the time, and it didn't happen. Um, that let, there's no pardon behind the fact they spent too much on him to get him, but it was either us or Frio. One of us was going to get him, and um, he was coming home regardless. Um, I look at how much we spend on him in two different ways and how it's affected us. He hasn't yep. hit his straps, played different roles too as well. But to me, this was his, and this was a question you were going to ask later on, he's going to be one of the breakout players. It has to be this year because, you know, he has to play more midfield time. I look at the what we spent on him in draft picks and then look at Geelong in their return. and. They spent one of their picks sort of went on to GWS, I think, for uh, Cameron. But the other two guys haven't played a game of football yet. No. And one of them is going to, if he doesn't play this year, he'll probably get delisted. So in that way, I, I see a little bit of a half win. But, yeah, Kelly, it's, yeah, it was for the now, uh, backfired. and But now he's one of the older statesmen in the team, you know. So, like, when you have Shuey and that retiring, like, he's going to be your main experienced guy in the gut, so he needs to stand up. Well, I think on his side, though, he's only 27. 26. Um, 27, is he? Yeah, he's 27, but he's only played 85 games, so he hasn't been smashed from pillar to post. And if I put that in perspective, if you look at somebody such as Jack Darling, he's on 236 games. Don Sheed, who's very similar in terms of age-wise, is 141 games. So he, he hasn't been smashed, and so he's got the capability to get Good years. He might even go a bit longer than the, than that thirty sort of barrier, which people get worried about. Uh, even if you have a look at someone along the lines of Elliot Yo, he's one seventy seven, so he's got a hundred odd games on top of him. Yep. But Yo hasn't been that. Uh, well, he's been either. So yeah, well, he's, yeah that, that's what, that's a problem. You just haven't been able to get your team on the park. That's it. And that that's why I said, you know, the last time I see Shuey Yo. Sheed in the guts was 2018 grand final. You look at the last three years and, you know, everyone can throw any excuse at it, you know, injuries, COVID, whatever, but these things happen. But that's where your depth comes into hand and it's where some of these younger guys got to stand up and put their hand up. And last year at Waffle level, none of them were putting their hand up to play. So that's why a lot of their older guys were getting games into them because the younger guys weren't pushing up. And a lot of fans were going, oh, we'll play the young kids. We well, can't play young kids if they're not doing anything in the lower level. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, right. And that's going to be the same this year. Um, and over here, it'll be the fans will be going, oh, Simo, you got to drop this player. you got to drop this player. But you can't just drop them just for the hell of it. You've got to have somebody that's going to come in and he's going to fit into that mould and, you know, not take a backwards step. They've got to take a frontward step. Well, you mentioned him a moment ago, and we'll talk about in terms of who's going to make that step shortly. Simo, I mean, he's premiership coach. That's great. That lasts. That's got him another four years. What, what's what's the what's the feeling about Simo over there at the moment? Because, like you said, he promised so much over the preseason. We've went and watched him last night, and mind you, once again, it's only a practice game, so you can only yeah. take so much out of it. But I have seen from other games and from other clubs that you can see their play style has evolved. Yeah. Collingwood looks like it's evolved. Even Gold Coast without uh, Big Benny King down there, they looked a little bit different as well too. West Coast looked a little bit uh, okay 
That's, Not that's, I- that, that was as good as I could say. And Port Adelaide, very, very similar as well. Like they, they didn't look like they've evolved or, or changed as much as well. Are there concerns about Simpson and his and, and the style that he's bringing? I don't, I don't think there's concerns about Simpson because people forget that you know we did play in 2018, but we also played in 2015 Grand Final, and both years yeah, we, we were. And we, uh, people forget about that one really quickly, yeah, don't they? And, and both. Both those years we were predicted to finish near the bottom of the ladder in both those years. So, but his style has to evolve. And it, look, he's been on interviews in the last two weeks saying um, the trained eye will see the differences, but the, the normal person might not see the differences. And I was watching it last night and, you know, I, I think I've got a good, good eye and I saw no difference in our game style at all. But was that because they just got dissected so easy by – Freeman will cut in the angles and stuff. I don't know. The proof in the pudding will be this uh, Sunday when they play them again. If they come out with the same sort of game plan like they did, then it looks like you haven't evolved. But you'd hope that with the Matthew Knight's inclusion, Jared Schofield from Port Adelaide's inclusion, um, that there should be subtle changes there. And that's what all Eagles fans are hoping to see because we know the, their brand of football that how them so good for so long is is gone. You can't do the long kick, slow ball movement because you're just going to get cut up like uh, they did last night. And you don't want to be cutting. You want to be the cutters, not the cutted. And that's um, it. And, and and with and if you have a bit of like you said, if you've got a bit of that aging list. They're not going to be going, you know, fifth gear balls to the wall stuff like they've done for many years. They're going to be they're going to be chasing tail, and, and yep. you can't afford to do that. So you mentioned like that transition from last year to to this season. There's some of these kids that need to step up. What have you heard so far? What have you seen in terms of players that okay, I'm, I'm a little bit excited by what I'm seeing here. Like this is this well, is this is what we need. We need more of this. Well, I have been down, down I have been down a bit of the open trainings and all that. And young kid last night he got injured in the first second term. I think Campbell Campbell Chesser that they got with their first pick this year. Um, he was looking great. He was on the track. He was what they needed, that guy that had a bit of spring, a bit of speed, outside run, and he was looking like he'd be a, around one debuter on a wing. Um, but unfortunately, he's rolled his ankle, and I think he's going to be out for six to 12 weeks, they said this morning. So he was one shining light that I looked at. Um, I don't know if you guys would have heard the guy, a kid's name. Well, he's not a kid. He's a mature age recruit. In uh, Greg Clark, and um, you know, it's the same old story with a lot of these mature age players. He was captain of WA in the under 18s, um, but they get overlooked in each draft as they go along. Last year in the waffle, he dominated, he got best and fairest in the he got the best on ground in the um, Subiaco grand final. And, yep, um, it was like West Coast, I think Geelong were interested in him, um, that's why West Coast moved up. To get him now. He was looking very likely for a debut in round one. Mature age body, um, sort of like I don't want to compare him to players, but he's got that Bontem Pally build. Oh yep. About yeah, him, you know what I mean. Big shoulders and all that. But unfortunately, he injured his shoulder in the grand final, and he re-injured it in the injury club last week. So now he's out for twelve weeks. So you you're looking at that. You know, can, you, can we have a break? Can no, we no. just give us a break? But he's, he's won 93 and eight, no, 94 kicks. You picked him up in the, the draft last year at pick yep. 62. So it was one of those, we'll just keep it down a little bit lower, but if, if Geelong don't take him, we're going to try and climb up a bit. So he's got, he's got a ready-made body where some of the kids don't. Yeah, he's, that's, um, that's a tough one. That's a, that's a tough one. And that, that, that was, that, and if you look, ask every Eagles fan, it was like the Tim Kelly saga all again. We got this mature age guy coming in. We know he's going to perform. He's he's going to be able to do it, and then he gets cut down to injury. But you know that's with this year's crop. Last year's crop, there's probably you got to look at the players like Zane True. Um, again, young guys that probably their bodies aren't. He he was rated a top twenty pick, and then some things went down in the media where Seamich said he wasn't. It was all about himself and blah blah. And he slipped free to our rookie draft. And he's a good look for this year. Unfortunately, he's still in the rehab group. I think there's uh, 18 players in the rehab group here at the Eagles at the moment. Um, but there's some younger players like uh, O'Neill, 
Xavier O'Neill. He played uh, about eight games last year on and off. And, um, yep. you know, I'm looking at guys like him to take that next step up. Um, there's Bailey Williams, the younger guy that's, you know, he's going to have to step up now in the ruck. Last night it looked like he didn't want to be out in the footy, footy field. But um, he needs to grow really quickly because uh, if Nick Nat goes down, uh, you're looking at the Eagles going right down. Yeah, because Callum Jamison's the only other bloke who's 200 centimetres on your list. No, we've he's got only 81 him. kegs. I weigh more than him. No, he, he's, <laughs> he's another guy who's in rehab. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> why don't we just play? Why don't we just call it? The, we're going to roof. This has to be the Wet Toast Eagles. You've got they to have, the Wet Toast Eagles now. Well, that's what that's what the Docker boys uh, from the Purple Rain refer to you as, and I'll be chatting yeah. to them for their Wet season toast, 2022 yeah. season podcast uh, season preview uh, very very shortly. So stay tuned for that one. That, Western Australian supporters, I reckon the Eagles had gone through what Fremantle went through last preseason, where they had a number of injuries. Um, but it, it comes down to your depth. Uh, you're saying tall guys on the list. There is Harry Edwards. He's he's the tallest on our list. I know on the uh, AFL or web. West Coast Eagles side, I have him about 200 centimetres. He's about 205 now. And he's grown. And uh, a young player that we picked up this year that I can't believe no play, uh, other teams picked this guy up earlier because to me, he's going to be a big key forward, and that's Jack Williams. Yep. Now, he, on the, I think on the list last year when I had the draft, he was 195 centimetres. Oh, mate, you are on point. I'm 195 but, and 94 kegs. Like, he's he's built. Like, But the night the night he was drafted, he was 201 centimetres. Okay. Oh, those so, are platform shoes. You know, so, the way um, those are in these days. <laughs> so there's another player that – and I've seen him at uh, Coles level, and he, this kid's going to be – he's going to be pretty good, I reckon. But oh, will he get a go this year? Who knows? You have to pull the trigger sometime. Uh, yeah. And the clubs that get the success – they realize they have to make that realization that all right, we're gonna we're gonna cut them. And I, I've had a chat to to the North Melbourne group recently. They did that a couple of years ago when they had their mass cull, where they got rid of um, Del Santo went, uh, Harvey went, just just yep. to name a couple. And they had to start blooding these kids. And you can see when they played during the week that it's going to start coming together. You can see a core there, even though they're not winning. You can see that there's yeah, a core. Yeah. We haven't seen that with your mob just yet. Like nah. We're still seeing the old, the old yep. guard. We start. We need to start seeing a couple of the new guard. Uh, I have to I ask you about. A, yeah, go I think for it. it'd be the last time you see the old guard. Yeah, this is the last hurrah, and um, and at the end of the year there will be massive cuts. I uh, can't see Redden being on the list. Uh, who knows with Shuey if he's not injured? You know, um, they're going to have to make some big, big calls this year. We did the list seven this year, but. Uh, there's going to be more cuts. And like you said, they've got to make the call. They have to make the call. And we're going to get to that call um, in a little bit later time. I have to ask you about Willie Rioli. Uh, you know, obviously being on the sidelines for, for, for quite a while, um, literally having his first major full preseason back, being able to get into the swing of things, et cetera. How's he looking? Because a lot of people over here in the eastern, uh, sorry, in the eastern side of the, of the country are thinking, okay, we well, only know Willie Rioli for one thing. But got to remember, this guy can actually play football very, very nicely. How's he looking at that? Well, he only played about a quarter and a bit last night. Hardly touched the ball, but when he did, you sat back and go, "Geez, that's what we've missed." He's got yeah. he's got that magic about him, um, and I think they're managing him so they don't overload him. Um, when they, you know, he come back last year, there was all this dreaming that, "Oh, look, he'll play the last round." And they pushed him into it, pushed him into it, and then he did his hammy. So I don't think they want to see that same situation happen for round one this year. Um, look, he's going to be an X factor. There's no denying that. And um, it's one of the excitement things that I'm looking forward to seeing is Willie Rioli back out there in the park with Liam Ryan in tandem. Um, and see, that's the way a lot of people start forgetting. When those two are together, you're going to have to put a good player on one of them at least, you know what I mean? The, so, the hard to contain. Both hard to contain. Good, both good in the air. Both good at ground level. Yeah. They can, they can kick goals as well. Ryan's, Ryan's played sixty nine and kicked hundred, so he knows his way around goals. And and Willie Rioli is averaging more than a goal a game, thirty uh, forty six over thirty eight games as well too. So both of those, you have to park somebody on them, and then you've still got you've still got the big boy down there who's who is the oldest player on your list, 
at 278 games, but 686 of your finest, Josh Kennedy. What a trade for Judd. Like, how many years ago did Judd finish up? Five, it'd be five years ago, I think now, and he's yes. still going, Josh. I know there's a bit of an age difference, but yeah. to see that trade and how it's worked out, you're sitting back going, I know, I know Judd was great for memberships and he was great for the club, et cetera, but geez, Josh Kennedy, when you have a look at his CV, unbelievable. And he'll, he'll still probably kick his 40 odd again this year. Well, there's a bit of a rumor going around that this won't be his last either, especially if Darling doesn't come back. So, but he's a player, just say, let's just say, let's just talk about this year. He's a player that's going to be on managed minutes all year. You know what I mean? He, will, will, he, will he travel away all the time? Um, are they going to be able to get the best out of him at, hit, uh, at his age? Um, and, but like you said, he's a dangerous player. Um, he only played half a game last night, managed minutes. So, yeah, look, he, he's a bit of excitement down forward as to so who's going to be there next to him. It, Dar- even if Darling come back this week, he wouldn't be playing to round three or four at the earliest. Uh, so, yeah, you'd be saying Oscar Allen, though, would be. But Oscar Allen's in a moon boot. So he did his stress fracture of the foot. How many good players do you have over there? Can we just ask that now? Because All right, well, everyone that's gone through literally is in the rehab group. Yeah, well, they. Or they're <laughs> curtain up next to them. Well, they released it this morning um, on the news. They've got 24 fit players on the list that could play this week. Oh, that's no good. So the, the scratch match was the last quarter was. Uh, less minutes because they didn't have anyone else to come back on. So they they got 24 players that aren't in rehab. So you have what? I think it's uh, 42 on a list. 42, so, 43. Yeah. Every club's a little bit different depending yeah. on how they work it, but yeah. So um, that's why they've got a couple of guys training at the moment and two of them are key forwards in Harvey Keitel. I don't know if you guys in the East would have heard much about him, but oh, in the yeah. Waffle, Oh, we loved him in um, – loved him in uh, – Oh, did I say Harvey Kotel? Tyler Kotel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, um, we loved him in um, Pulp Fiction. He was amazing. Yeah. Um, but he's um, he's in the waffle. He's kicked 70 goals in the last two years and the year before he kicked 60. He's a premier full forward in the waffle over here. So he's got a chance. He played the last eight minutes of the game last night and – Hugh Dixon, who was on the Dockers list, he played pretty good last night in the first half. He kicked two goals for the Eagles. So he was probably the only shining light. But um, they're two guys that are pushing for a spot for that Jack Darlin uh, position. Yeah. So, But Jake Waterman, he's another one, and he'll probably play now because he was in and out of the team last year. And to me, he's probably the best mark and the best kick in – our forward line structure in the Eagles, if you ask me. You know, what's interesting when you look at the, the makeup of all the clubs and you have a look at the playing list, et cetera, you've only got 40 players on your list. Those 37 main and three, that's the lowest out of all the clubs. Yeah, because Shepard retired earlier this year yep. because of the concussion, so his spots oh, opened up. So his spots opened up, yep. Um, they, had, they left one open after the draft. And now there's an extra list with an extra spot there if they put Jack Darling onto the inactive list. So they can potentially pick three players in the next week, week or so, which I think they'll wait till this Sunday when they play the Dockers again. Yep, next see Sunday. what happens out of that. And see what happens out of then. And, but one of those guys, and pff, it's going to sound like a recurring record here, is a, Luke, uh, a ruckman called Luke Stranatica who was on the Dockers list for – I think two years, never got a game. They delisted him, went back and played last year at Eastry Mantle. Yep. Um, he was the first person on the train-on list when they started, what, six weeks ago, and three weeks in he did his plantier fascia. I was about to say, let me guess, he's injured? Yeah, he's injured. So, <laughs> <laughs> so just, for the, just for the listeners uh, who might be getting a little bit concerned about what they're hearing today, this is actually a season preview for season 2022. Not a medical podcast no. on the West Coast Eagles injury list. I know they sound very, very similar at the moment. There's a lot of crossover. And we haven't, right. even, we haven't even spoken about Josh Cripps yet. Oh, and he's out for 12 weeks with a pectoral. 
You know what? The best thing is you've got the hyphen in. You brought the hyphen in from Carlton, Sam Petrevsky, seaton And you haven't heard he, about him either. He, he's, is he injured? He did his knee bruising medial ligament last week and they're looking at round one or two. <laughs> you have got 24 fit players and considering that you can play 23, if you can't get a game in that starting 23, you'd have a good look at your career. You'd, you'd rather yep. just fake an injury just to say that I was the one player who wasn't good enough to get into that team. All right. so That's a good way of looking at let's it. Let's just try and all put this aside. And yep. let's let's try and have some bright spots for it. Who's who is going to be the breakout for your mob this year? So the Eagles looking at it. There's got to be someone or oh, some well, bodies. Well, the two I already had named where Greg Clark goes was what I was hoping. But Jermaine Jones, I think it's time for him. He's got that X factor about him. He was in and out of the team last year. Um, he's he's an exciting player to watch. He lives with uh, Tim Kelly. So they're pretty close. They come over both from Geelong. Um, to me, if he if he has a breakout season this year, and you put him in the forward line, you got uh, Liam Ryan, uh, Rioli, as we said, and Jermaine Jones, yep. plus your three tours. I think that's going to be an exciting forward line. But can the ball get to him? That'll be the bigger question. So um, he's my breakout um, for the for the year, hopefully. And there's quite a number of, like you said just then, younger players that. They've got to be putting a hand up like Isaiah Winder. He's You play him on a wing, he's pretty good. Uh, Zane True, which uh, I reckon is, he'll probably take over a Redden spot once he retires, and Xavier O'Neill as youngsters that can step up. So it's got, there is some excitement in there to be had, so we'll find out if they're good enough. And I, and I think what you're saying with those kids <laughs> are exciting. They are, but they just haven't had their opportunity. That, like out yeah. of all those names that you mentioned, the most that's been able to play Xavier O'Neill with 13 games. Yeah. So to say that they're breaking out, they've actually got to get in the team first and foremost and have that opportunity to shine. I think Jermaine I, James will because heaven to bid, touch wood, he doesn't walk under a ladder, but um, he was showing stuff last year that what he could do. Um, so – Hopefully he's a regular spot. Um, a lot of people have been talking up Jack Petricelli over here. Yep. Um, and they're saying he's the best trainer, but you can train as, as well as you like. But if you can't put him into that into a game, yep. um, you can. You know, there's, there's no point in being the best trainer. You got to be one of the best players. So uh, last night he's got speed, but he just doesn't use it. So he's one that needs to really step up. It is a radical idea. If you are fit. I reckon you go the the Jack Darling training program, which is just stay away from the main group. <laughs> go and train by yourourselves, all right? You'll look like Tarzan and you might actually be able to get out on the park sometime during 2022. All righty. Unfortunately, uh, Simo's going to be doing the tap on the shoulder to somebody at the end of the year, and it's not going to be the tap on the shoulder that most of us want. Who's um who's going to be the breakdown, unfortunately? Who can you see having their last season? the Eagles in 2022? I'd have to put it down to Cripps or Redden. Yep. Um, unfortunately, Cripps, like what I just said, he's out for 12 weeks, but Redden's towards that end. And, you know, for the Eagles to go forward, you got to look at the guys at the older end of the spectrum. Uh, Redden's, what, 30, 31 this year. Um, you know, he, he has been playing pretty good. He played pretty good football last year, but, He's going to have to have an outstanding season to stay on board. They're going to have to make some hard decisions, and he's one that's probably I'd be looking at, players yep. like him. Um, yeah, there's going to be some hard decisions uh, coming forward at the end of the year. Um, you know, will Hearn go away? Like, everyone's saying Hearn's reinvented the uh, the book. They reckon he's looking better than he ever has. So are those guys going to be kept on for another year? Will JK be kept on for another year? Um, it's going to be interesting come to the end of the year, and I guess it all depends on how they go this year. I guess. So I'll ask you a question: What would you prefer if you had to? If you had, if this was the Matrix and you had the red pill and the blue pill, the red pill is to finish mid table again. So let's just say ninth at best, uh, seventh or eighth make finals, but scrape in. Or would you rather go? Okay, bugger this. We're going to have a bit of a start, which is going to be a shocker. You can see that happening. We're just going to blood the kids. We have to play the kids. 
fall completely down the ladder and then just start getting games into these these kids to see what's going to happen. Would you rather the the blue or would you rather the red? Would you rather the the semi okay year but doesn't no. really get you anywhere? Or would you no. rather, hey, okay, you know what? Let's take the sacrifice now because we have to do that for the future. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at the future, mate. Um to me there's no point in finishing middle of the road. You know what I mean? And that's why a lot of Eagles fans over here are a bit miffed on how they went about it and how they're gonna go about it because there's their blind Eagles things. Oh, no, we give it one last tilt. And, you know, if they were all fit, cool, yeah. But they're not all fit. So, um, yeah, I, I prefer the second option, mate. And, you know, the last time Eagles had a top 10 draft pick was 2010 with Andrew Gaff. 2010. So. Um, 12, 12 years ago. Yeah, so people seem to forget that. Like, um, you look at Geelong, they're, they're probably list them. They're, they're probably the oldest, I'd guess, uh, Geelong. And both teams, well, apart from – they're the teams that have been in the finals the most in the last 16 years. So yeah. someone's got to give. <coughs> and um, Geelong, uh, same sort of era that they're in. They've got to give it last one hurrah. They've got an advantage, having have the best home ground advantage. So they will finish middle of the road or higher. But where do they get their list regeneration from? Regenerated? Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd have to take the second option, lower as we can, get a lower draft pick. But then the Eagles probably trade that away now on them. So, <laughs> well, if you look at Geelong, they've got 16 players over the age of 29. 16, geez. That's it, yeah, 16. I, I don't care whatever. I, and you look at those names, when that falls off the cliff, they're going to yeah. fall and they're going to fall hard because they haven't got the draft picks because they've used them all yeah. to, to get people in. That's going to be an interesting one. All uh, righty. Now, what are your co-hosts? What are they saying when they look at the when they look at the Eagles? Where, where are they sort of positioning? What are they hoping for where they're going to finish up? Well, well they're pretty similar like us. So they're, they're hoping for that last hurrah. Uh, Wayne's probably more not – Dan's probably more hoping for that last hurrah, but they're both realists and they're saying, look, if we're not there, thereabouts after round six or seven, we've got to blood the youth and we've yep. just got to go for it and take that bit of pill, um, swallow some pride. And the Eagles are good. They're, a, they're an outfit based on success. So they won't want to be staying down too long. And they never have really when they've, you know what I mean? You look at their 30-year history and they very rarely stay out of the finals too long. I think I, 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 the most. I actually, I actually think the downfall of West Coast started when Murray Renstead ran into open <laughs> In the uh, uh, elimination the final, <laughs> <laughs> I was at that game, and I'll never forget it. So, I hey, mean, you no got to gonna... enjoy the good times. You got to enjoy the good times. When it no, he was going to forget it either. <laughs> ah. Hey, we're the only two teams that have ever played in a game. I think that's been stopped by lightning. Yeah, that was a very interesting game last year because I was at the game, and uh, we're like, "What the hell's going on here?" Because if at the ground, you couldn't see any lightning. Oh. But it was on, it was on the way though. That's the thing. Yeah. Is it was on the way. So we're watching it here, and they're going well. And then they didn't know what the rules were. Like, yeah. Do they stop it? Do they play it? And, the, and then and Melbourne almost put the queue in the rack with eighteen minutes to go or something, and you just went bang, 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 and got it within a couple. So yeah, it was an interesting game, and like half the people were starting to leave because people were getting told to leave. They said the game's finished, and uh, people were getting told to leave. And then all of a sudden they come back on, and then uh, like you said, uh, Eagles kicked I think six goals in about. 10 minutes, and I was going, yeah. well, where's this been for the whole year? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, can understand um, why, I can understand why Scotty wants quarters to go back to uh, 15 minutes and, um, <laughs> and 17 rounds because his team can't do anything more than that. Otherwise, they're out too late. They can't get back into the retirement home. Right. Okay. <laughs> so let's, um, like I say, every single, every single time, it's time to put the, uh, the bias away from your group. Um, we're going to put the agates on the chopping board. And I have to ask if you a few things from a league perspective, then we'll, we'll wrap up with the last couple of things when it comes to your group as well. So Premier for 2022, who have you got your eye on at this moment in time? Well, I've got it down to three teams. I've got it down okay. to Mel- your, your mob, Melbourne. Yep. I think, you know, if they can continue on that and, like like last year, injury free. I think that helps a lot of teams if you're injury yep. free. Um, yeah, I got. I'm, I'm not a big fan of Bulldogs, but I think they'll still be up there. And the Cats, I reckon they've got enough talent to give it one last hurrah if they win all the games at 
cut in your park. So yep. if I had to pick out of there, and just because it's your show, I'm going to say Melbourne, mate. <laughs> Please, look, I, I appreciate this, but we are a global sport or a global <laughs> podcast and we encompass all 18 clubs. Well, they're the team right. I'd like to see win. Out so of would I. And I will too. But the problem is, is that if they do go back to back, I'm going to have to raise all these beautiful pictures that you can't see on the radio right now up a level. I'm going to have to get another row, and that just means more money for the That's an unfortunate which, thing about it. Which is an unfortunate thing. Oh, trust me, it's not. I've had, I've got 46, uh, 46, then 47 years of saving. So we're good with that. Um, Coleman medalist. This is always, this has been an interesting one so far. The, the, the picks that you had for premiers has pretty much been on par with what we've selected so far. But from a Coleman medal perspective, this is always one that sort of throws a, a odd, strange name in the air, I must admit. Yeah, look, um, I was looking at the boy from uh, Carlton, but he's injured. So I don't know how many rounds he's going to miss. So, um, look, first month, they reckon? Yeah, well, look, yeah, I would have had him, but I, I'm going to go safe bet here. I'm going to go uh, Hawkins, mate. You're just going the, um, you're just going a, a casual uh, punt on uh, black, red or black. We'll just go black. We'll just keep it safe. No, keep, keep it safe. I think out of all the ones that we've done so far, he's come up probably I, I, about eighty percent of the time. And when you're I, built like that, yeah. and you have a smile with those pearly white teeth, like how could you, how could you not want to kick it to him? I'd love to see Kennedy or Buddy up there. Nice. Um, well, I think everybody just wants to see Buddy get to a thousand like that because yeah, you, well, you're, you're not going to see it again. You're not no. going to see it again. No. Uh, Brownlow medalist. This is an interesting one. Well, we're getting feedback with Brownlow medalists because people go, "Yeah, I'll pick a Brownlow medalist," but we're, we're starting to get more invested in the MVP coaches award because they look at it from a holistic level, not just a midfielders yeah. award. So who have you got as your Brownlow medalist or if there was a midfielder that you'd pick would win the award because the people at the other end of the ground don't get it. Yeah, well, look, poor defenders that do the hard work all the time never get get noticed. Yep. Uh, look, over here in the West, a lot of people are talking up Nathan Fife, even though he, he probably hasn't, you know, been injured and doing a lot of training and they're saying he's looking prepared for next year, a, this year. He's got a goatee. That. He's got a goatee. You yeah, know, that's, like, that, that's 10% of the toughness right there. He looks like a man for once. Um, no disrespect <laughs> to uh, Freo fans. Just some people do say he looks like one of the girls out of the girls' competition. Um, but <laughs> don't worry, they'll be saying things about your players in a, in a couple of days' time. So oh, don't throw, worry. Throw barbs. <laughs> um, look, I, I'd say uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Bond and Pally this year. Yeah. Nice. I think, um, oh, look, it, it, unlucky not to win it this year. Um, and Bulldogs seem to, when he's playing good, they're, they're, they're about, you know what I mean? So um, I'd like to see him win it. Um, you know, like you said, you could name up Truck, you could uh, Oliver, Dusty, all those guys. They're all going to be up there, the favourites. But, you know, it would have been good to see Walsh not injured out there having a go. Yep. Um, I'd, I'd love to see Chera go close. Just so. It's a nice one. Haven't heard that. So, that hasn't come up before. Just so I could have some memo against some Freo fans, so because <laughs> <laughs> that's all it is about over here. So I oh, know, I can't wait. Life. I got. To, I'm speaking with the duck from the Purple Rain. I, I, I can't wait to unload. And the first thing is, so tell us about your feelings on West Coast this year. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I do listen to their podcast. I do like what they're doing, and uh, at least they get endorsed by their club. So yeah. they're one of the lucky podcasts that do get endorsed by their football club. They so, do. They do. Uh, they're a lucky boys. Uh, have a bit of humour. From a headline perspective, we open up the Western Australian, look at the back page, season's finished. What's going to be the headline for the West Coast Eagles this year? <laughs> I could go to Simo gone after fans backlash, after fans backlash. Yep. Or Nat Nui does another knee, their <laughs> end of knee for the Eagles. <laughs> Not Nui does another knee, <laughs> but will still be ranked the number one player in the league. Uh, all right, and last thing, where, well, give us a spot on the ladder where we've got you. Oh, look, as we said before, the top end, you're looking at the Eagles. I can't see them getting any higher than seven. Yep. Um, you know, provide, and to me, that's just not an ideal place to finish unless you can do something in finals. And realistically, anywhere between 10th and 14th, I think the Eagles will finish. Fair enough. Just Based on what I've seen so far. 
based on what you've seen. Just one other thing, if you're not too sure, uh, for a game to continue, you need to have 14 players run out at the start of a game. Or it's 14, is throughout it? it? It's 14. So just in case, um, for the people out there, if you lose, unfortunately, you've only got 24. So if you lose 10 of those, you the still COVID. can run out. You can still run out. Two COVID. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about it. No, there might be, no, 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 listen, no one gets COVID. You just get everything else. Um, <laughs> so for the listeners out there who uh, who follow you on, on a regular basis, the Eagle Nation, what have you guys got planned for 2022? What do you, what's, what's it looking like? Are you guys in shape at the moment? Yeah, we've done uh, the one podcast last week. We've got another one this, uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually. Got one coming up this Wednesday. We're going to dissect the massacre, the scratch match massacre, for those who are going to be listening if this is out by then. Um, but other than that, we're every week. Uh, we have got some special guests. I've lined up a couple of players, ex-players, um, that have just recently retired. I, I don't want to say their names, but they're in the media. Um, oh, give it, give us one, give us one, give it, give right. us a tease. I, I'll, say, I'll, 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 I promise it's only between the two of us. I'll say it's number thirty-one, and you can work that out. Ex-player oh. number thirty-one, Ronald yeah. Dale, Barassi, Fritchie. It's <laughs> no wonder of the. F- Oh, I'm joining you. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's, he's on board to coming on. There's, there's a couple others later in the season. Um, got a couple of journos coming on towards the middle of the year for the under-18s, uh, so we can do a little bit of a couple of specials on just the WA players over here uh, because I do quite a bit of that during the year on different uh, football pages. So that's one of my hobbies, uh, looking at the under-18s and Predicting who goes where and who goes who goes to what clubs and stuff like that. So, got a pretty good success rate there. I uh, don't want to uh, blow wind up my ass, but I am. <laughs> Tickets, jeez, I'm talking about. <laughs> Screw you! Didn't need to get a ticket from me for the grand final. You could have just peeled one off your back. <laughs> hey, listeners, can I just say, look, I, I had a chat to Wazza last year when we did the 2021, and you couldn't ask for a better bloke to jump on and do the 2022. He does your club proud every single week. The whole podcast does your club proud every single week. And if you're not following following them right now, down in the notes, you're going to see their socials. Get on, follow them. Like I said, the Eagles, look, between you and I, I haven't got them pretty much in in top half of the eight. I think it's just going to be a bit of one of those years. You just have to just have to take the you're gonna have to hit. Yep. You're going to have to take the hit. We've all been through it. but. You're a proud club over there and you are a proud man. And, and thus, I have one question and one question only to finish this off. Was uh, the West Coast guru from the Eagle Nation podcast, how do you want your footy? There's only one way there, mate, and that's lace out. There you go, listeners, your Eagles 2022 season preview. Have a great night. And Bozza, you're a star, mate. Thanks very much. Good joining again, bud. Thanks again. Thanks for listening to the latest episode of Place Out. Head over to iTunes and Spotify to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. And remember, join us every single Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, on our Facebook page with yours truly, Christopher Pepper, and the co-host with the most, Jamie Wallace, giving you your footy how you want it. Place Out. <laughs>